What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Inside ACW. Today, I am joined by the coolest man in ACW, of course, we're talking about Cool Guy, aka Mr. Henderson. Welcome, Cool Guy. Pleasure to be here. So, Cool Guy, of course, as always, dude, we're going to ask you a series of questions here for this Inside ACW podcast. And first up, I want to ask you, what were your thoughts on the Soul Survivor pay-per-view last night? Well... Well, I guess I would have to say it was a pretty good pay per view. I liked it, like oh. a surprise, like surprise winners, new, ch- well, new champs, well, new tag team champions, and and people uh, just kept on fighting to redeem what's there still. Oh, one hundred percent. And I must say, I am impressed by everyone tonight. Oh, it was absolutely one hell of a show. Because let's start with the men's Royal Rumble from last night. Of course, Hunter, member of D-Generation X, surprising everybody, coming out, I believe, number 26, I think it was, and he actually won the damn thing. It was a really impressive victory. A lot of people, though, I think, a little bit sour that Alistair didn't get the win at number 27, but hey, what were your thoughts? How did you feel when Hunter stole that victory? To be honest with you, I was absolutely shocked that Hunter won the Rumble. Like, Mm -hmm. Like, to be honest, out of everyone in the Rumble... Hunter was actually the one to man up and just eliminate everyone that stood in his his path. Oh, 100%. He was absolutely fantastic last night. He just literally tore the house down when he got in that ring. He did not leave a single soul standing by the time he was done. Do you think it's going to be the breakdown of D-Generation X if Damien's still world champion at end of days? It could be. Or it will just be like a brotherly battle between the two. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, like... Um, Damien and Hunter are really good friends right now. So it could be like an implode of DX or they will actually have a pretty good friendship at end of days and make it a good brotherly battle between the two. Oh, I agree personally. Yeah, I think like the both of them right now are closer than brothers. Absolutely. The bond between them is phenomenal. And I don't know though. I think I agree with you in one sense that it could be a great brotherly friendship battle, like, you know, two friends kind of giving it the best they can, but I don't know, I feel like Damien definitely has a bit more of an ego, and that might come into play, especially against, you know, Hunter. Hunter's, of course, lost the tag team titles there. Oh, actually, it was Damien's fault, the reason he lost the tag team titles, but I don't know, Hunter, he seems to have that edge about him that's like, he doesn't care when it comes to the world title, he's like, he's going to go for it, I think he's going to give it everything, even if, you know, yeah. it ends up breaking their friendship. But we'll have to wait and see what happens, of course, with those two. Next up, of course, we did actually have the tag team title match. Damien, of course, being busted open last night, losing the tag titles. Did you see that one coming? Well, I guess I kind of did, considering on how the Usos were going all out on them last night. Mm-hmm. But then again, DX also had had a pretty good advantage, too. Like, Hunter had the pedigree, Damien had the super kick, aka Sweet Shit Music. Mm-hmm. I actually thought DX would win the tag team titles. Therefore, it would still be the world champion and tag team champions. Well, I agree. I thought it would be the same as well. I thought the Usos were going to put up a good fight. But I thought DX definitely were going to retain last night. It was definitely a shocker to see Damien Inla go down like that. It was so painful to watch. But, of course, we know yeah. later on in the show, things got a little bit different. But congratulations, of course, to the Usos. That was a, was a great win last night. Next up, of course, the hardcore title was on the line last night. Revan, Jericho, and Owen. Now, I know you like Owen. I know you're a big fan of Owen. But did you think he was going to retain last night? To be honest, I didn't. I didn't think he would retain. Because I actually believed this would be Jericho's moment. Returning a few weeks ago, I actually thought he would have his glory and retain and get the hardcore title. Mm-hmm. But, but then again, Owen has been clenching that title really hard and would not let it go to anyone he's almost like henderson in a way you know he refused to let that belt go it's it seems to be a big (laughs) favorite between you guys because that transitions right into the world title match of course owen did defend the hardcore title but of course damien lost the tag team titles now the world title on the line damien definitely had the disadvantage i think going into that match of course with owen winning a ladder match to get into the title match what are your thoughts on owen versus damien do you think they did a good job last night or do you think it could have been better I think they did a fanta- a fantastic job last night. Like Damien lost the tag team title that may that might have given him some motivation for his world title match. Oh yes. And Owen 
with retaining the hardcore title may have given him a bit of a, a tiny bit of ego saying I can do this I know I can beat Damien if I can beat two people in one ring I know I can beat Damien for the world title oh 100 yeah I, I think Owen definitely went with a chip on his shoulder last night and both men put on an absolute belter of a match I think personally for me it was my favorite match of the night those two pulled yeah, out stunts that we've never seen before or at least we've not seen in an extremely long time. So I can't wait to see those two go out again in the future. Do you think maybe, maybe we could see a triple threat for the world title at the end of days? Um, it depends. It depends if, if Owen still thinks he's ready for the world title, which which I say he is. I say he is. He would be a fantastic world champion. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure if, if Owen is actually quite ready to hold that title yet, considering he, he lost... He lost those matches. He lost the knockout match, which Damien won, mm-hmm. and he lost last night. So you think maybe he's so, had too many opportunities? Yes, but I'd say, I'd say we should put him. Well, well, here's what I think: if Owen goes into the world title match at end of days, or or he could fight at bitter end. Mm, this I'd is say, true. I'd say if Owen doesn't win the world title. Um, he doesn't get 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 the world title unless unless if Damien loses that title. Like as long as Damien's champion, Owen can't get can't get a world title. I like the sound of that. Yeah, it's a pretty good idea. So it's kind of like if Damien can, if continues to beat Owen, Owen gets one last shot at Bitter End. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, that's, that could be interesting. You never know what can happen. Of course, Bitter End guys coming up in less than two weeks' time. Of course, the final pay per view before End of Days four. But of course, cool guy, I want to definitely get your thoughts on this one, my dude. Of course, that transitions us right to the women's Royal Rumble. Of course, the women's MA Championship on the line last night. Of course, Eliara coming out on top, finally winning the women's championship. But your superstar Melina was in there. She came in, I believe, around 22. I could be wrong I on that number. I think she was but... 17. Oh, was it 17? I know she was in there a long time. Yeah. But uh, what were your thoughts on Melina? Of course, did you think she had a good chance last night to win the Rumble? I actually thought she had no chance on winning, considering being five foot tall, and literally with with like other women out in the ring. I actually thought she would like go in and then go out, mm-hmm. like what Nathan Henderson did in the men's rumble match. <laughs> but but surprisingly, Melina actually did better than that and actually survived. Oh, she did a great job last night. Long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course. Well, how do you feel now that uh, Alexandra finally dropped the belt? Do you, are you happy there's a new champion, or are you a big fan of Alexandra? Um. Well, I like all of the the women in the in the locker room, but I must say I am actually glad there's a new women's inmate champion. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are quite happy. Yeah. Yeah. Eliara has actually pulled off a total shocker by actually winning the the women's inmate title which to be honest though with Alora coming out at number 30 mm-hmm. I actually thought Alora was going to win it oh definitely when I seen Alora come out like oh she earned a position in a fatal four yeah. match to get to that number 27 spot but the minute you see Alora coming out at 30 you're like ah no never mind there's your winner there's your winner <laughs> and then the last thing I believe it was Victoria they finally got rid of Victoria and immediately Eliara just nails Alora with that clothesline, sending her straight over the top and winning the title. Such a strong moment. Do you think that if Alora was able to avoid that clothesline, do you think things would have went differently? I think I think it could have went differently. Like it depends on what Alora's next move would be after that. Like mm-hmm. like if he like if she just reverses the the clothesline, then she could either clothesline Eliara over the, the top rope. Or or it could have been very much different, like Hurricane Rana over the top rope, or just keep on brawling it out. Who do you think would win in the brawl, Eliara or Laura? Um, it, um, I would have to say Alora. Yeah, I'm with Alora you. Alora is is that much of a fighter? She would do anything to get that women's title. Oh, definitely. Two time yeah. champion already, of course, the shortest reigning champion in ACW history for the women, <laughs> but still, she still holds it twice, so you never know what can happen come better end. So, next up, Cook, yeah. I want to ask you, how did you originally discover ACW? So, I 
Um, my friends told me to get this app called Mixer. It's a streaming service. Therefore, I could see other people's streams and talk to them, make new friends. And then I wanted to, to search up if they have WWE 2K19 streams, and they did have it. And and some of the, the streams I looked at, they mostly just had creating superstars or just regular Raw shows on how they did it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to to see some some new shows that I have never seen before. So then I kept on scrolling and I seen your stream and then I went on there and then I just I was just amazed by all of the stuff you did making that show. And I was like I, I like it. Okay. I will I will always be coming here because I I've never seen anyone put so much work on on a wrestling show before. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you. Actually, honestly, that is uh, that's really put a big smile on my face already. Actually, because I love hearing like the stories of how people found ACW, and to me, that means a lot. You know, because I, I do put everything into ACW. Like for those at home who don't know this, I would spend like most people know I have like two days off a week, but yeah. I don't actually have time off at all. I actually spend most of that time either coming up with storylines, designing superstars, designing arenas, working on pay-per-view ideas. I spend, I'd say, majority of my time off just constantly working on ACW. And of course, with two shows a week, we might go, oh, but it's only two shows a week. It's, it's easy. It's, like, it's far from easy. I think, like, recently, I know I've got a lot of people trying to message me now, trying to create new superstars and stuff. And I think people are only starting to realize now how much work actually goes into it. And it's so nice to know that people, when they first find it, they really do appreciate that they can instantly say, like you said yourself, that you've seen how much work I put in. You're like, whoa, I want to be here for this. This this is interesting. Do you know, I think that's that's really amazing. So, of course, you've been in ACW now about, what, two years nearly? Give or take, roughly? You've been in both generations. Two. About two years, yeah. So, yeah. since you first joined, how much has actually changed in ACW since then? Um, Well, considering by when I first watched it and how I'm watching it now, I'd say a lot has changed. New superstars came in, um, new champions every single time. There's, there's just so much new stuff happening in ACW every single week, I and every single show it gets better. Good. Well, that's one thing I always want to uh, you know push towards is is always trying to improve every single show, make each more show more interesting to keep you guys excited and keep you guys entertained. You know, I know some days we have like some uh, shows, but you know, we always try and strive for the better. Now, of course, speaking of your time here in ACW now, let's talk about your very first superstar, Jacob Henderson. I love this guy, but let's go back to his debut. Do you remember his debut? Oh, I do. Oh, my goodness. Now, I remember when Henderson first came in and the design of him. Of course, you designed him yourself, and I will admit I was not a fan at all, guys. I was not a fan of how Jacob Henderson looked. And his moveset yeah. and everything, I was like, this guy is, this guy's never going to make it. <laughs> you know, this guy is, <laughs> he's not going to be a big star in AZW. We'll just, we'll just put him in like a jobber. Now, if you remember that as well, we, he was a jobber. What were your thoughts on him when he first entered ACW? Um, well, when I first seen him, I was like, oh my gosh, my superstar is actually on ACW. I am, this is a big moment for me. And then as soon as when it kept on going past, I was like, I am not liking my superstar so far. Like his looks, just that purple hair, no facial hair looking. That's right. He just looks like a discount Seth Rollins. <laughs> discount Seth Rollins. With Shinsuke Nakamura's moves. Mm-hmm. And I might say, um, um, his moveset was okay because he actually kicked him like right in the throat yeah if possible but his looks didn't didn't look that good i guess do you know who he reminded me of do you remember drew mcintyre back in the day in WWE when he first came in like 2004 the chosen one, yeah when he was the chosen one he reminds me of that like this this kid that's just too young or too inexperienced to be here but then develops yeah. into this a badass throughout his life that's what he reminds me of yeah and that was actually before Like, I think when I probably got in the game, like, a month or two ago from that, Mm -hmm. 
and and I had no idea on how to create, and that's literally the best I could do. But then I got better. At well, you creating. did. You definitely did. Oh yeah. So I remember then, uh, obviously, we had him in the show for a while, and then we had yeah. an injury angle for Jacob Henderson. And that's when you kind of took him away and you started to redesign him, and what you sent back was just incredible. Like It felt like the character had evolved in a massive way. And I believe that's when we brought in the All-American Nightmare for the oh. big finish. And uh, oh. I remember when you sent him back, I was like, okay, now this, this is a guy that we can do something with. And I said to yourself, cool guy, we're going to do something with it. And you're like, what are we going to do? I'm like, I'm not going to tell you. And before you knew it, we instantly just, I, I, I was saying to Willow as well at the time, going, Willow, this is it. This is the guy now. This is the man I want as my next world champion. She's like, really? I'm like, yep, this is going to be the man. And I remember watching it play out. I remember you sitting there going, kill, kill, what's going to happen next? I'm like, ah, just relax, my dude. You got, I got this. I got this. And then boom, massive skyrocket into the main event. And it was, it was such an amazing moment. Like, How did that make you feel to watch Henderson go from this pale-faced, wannabe to this badass of a world champion when i first seen it i was like it almost did bring a tear to my eye considering my superstar actually made it to the top Mm -hmm. like from going from jobber to main eventer that's just amazing like i mostly never thought i would make it to the main event picture considering on how he looked before but then of course the the redone he did it oh yeah and like that's what people don't realize as well is like sometimes you know all it takes is a, a step back you know kind of take a look at everything and realize hmm why am i not making it to top why are people not falling in love with my characters like the reason i put people in the main event is i take the gauge of what other people see and what they'll say so if the chat is reacting heavily to a character i'm like okay people like this guy let's give him a push and if people are like, mm, not really into them, then they won't. You know what I mean? You, it's kind of like in real life in WWE, for example, or any yeah. wrestling promotion. If a star is over with the crowd, they're going to want to put them out there. Whereas if they're not, they want to kind of keep them back going, well, if you're not going to make it, you're not going to make it. And that's how Henderson started. It was like, this kid ain't going to make it. That rework, yeah. he came back and everyone was like, whoa, this guy. And immediately I just knew, I was like, yeah, we're taking this guy to the top. And of course, once he got there, once we were like, okay, it's time to rein it back in now, buddy. And immediately he's like, no, I'm not dropping this title. You can't make me. <laughs> you can't make me drop this title. I've earned this. Yeah, like, I think it was the end of days three. Finally, he let the title go to K&M after a grueling battle. No. I don't think it was end of day three. I think it was the pay-per-view before end of days. Armageddon, I think. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, you're right. Actually, it was Armageddon. That's right. I remember he was fighting at end of days for the title and K&M was in there. Because I remember K&M won it. The last one. I was at end of days. I think I was fighting for the inmate championship. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's very yeah. confusing. Like there's so many titles. Like hey, fucking Henderson has had such a run that it's it's hard to keep up yeah. with it all. You know, with so many superstars. Like, but Henderson's one of my absolute favorites from what they were to what they became. You know, like he, and as well the fact he went to the Hall of Fame in the end. How did that make you feel when you go when I announced that Jacob Henderson is officially a Hall of Famer of ACW? Again, I was. I was shocked. Literally did bring tears to my eyes that time because my superstar actually did something in his career. Mm-hmm. He won the world title. He won multiple tag titles. He won the hardcore title. And and he made it into the hard, Hall of Fame. The hardcore Hall of Fame. <laughs> hardcore Hall of Fame. Yeah. Well, Henderson was absolutely fantastic because with Henderson joining the Hall of Fame, guys, that did mean that someone new would have to take the boots of the Henderson family. And of course, that young man, his son, Nathan Henderson, took over the reins in Generation 2. So, cool guy, let's take a look at Nathan Henderson so far. What are your thoughts on his career at the moment? Well, at the moment right now, I'd say it's. It's like an in-between. Like, he's doing good, but then he's, like, he's not winning that much. Like, he's probably saving up for something, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, something big. Like, he's had a big moment already in his career this year, of course. Teaming up with Kai K&M for the majority of the year, since basically when they first came in, of course, the K&M legacy joining sides with the Henderson legacy. You know, they clashed in Gen 1, but Gen 2, they worked well. But, of course, then... What was it all about when Henderson turned on Kai? Like, a lot of people were very surprised to see that happen. I'd say it was all about power. Like, like he says he, 
like he said, he's better than everyone in the locker room ever since he won that inmate title. Mm -hmm. And and even though he he held the hardcore title before that, he didn't have. He still respected everyone, but I think I think that hardcore title might have been the start of Henderson's power hungry. Mm -hmm. Like like he feels like he wants to be better. He wants more gold, and he just went after the MMA title, beat Marcus Payne after when he won it. That was brilliant. Yeah, it was brilliant. But then again, I, I felt sorry for Payne. I did. Yeah, he was watching Henderson... me for two days. <laughs> yeah. Wins the pay-per-view, loses that on would Tuesday. Have to be, that would have to be the shortest male title run. It for was. The title. It was the shortest in the history of the belt. No one's ever held it that little time. <laughs> it was well, embarrassing. I Marcus, well, I guess Marcus did, did make history that night. He did. Shortest title reign in ATW history. And the irony, of course, as well. Ellie, uh, sorry, Laura in uh, the Elimination Chamber not long after had the same fate. Two days she oh. held the belt. Oh, pain, pain. <laughs> but of course, now speaking of the women, of course, your female superstar, Melina, currently in Gen 2. Now, I call Melina the workhorse of the women's division. Not because she looks like a horse, guys, because <laughs> every single night she goes out there, you know, she gives it everything she has. She may be the five feet of fury in ACW, but she really gives it. She might not win every single match, but she really does give everything she has. I absolutely adore watching her matches because you never know what she's going to do next. Like, what are your thoughts on Melina's career so far? I, I'm actually enjoying Melina's career. Sure, she hasn't done anything big yet, but actually being in the um, in the bragging rights team at Summer in the Asylum. That was awesome. Yeah, that, that might have, have like maybe lit a small fire in Melina saying she can do big things in the future. Oh yes, definitely. Like, as you said, being in that match was a big, big moment for her and she did really, really well in that match. You know, unfortunately she was the first eliminated but before that she gave a hell of a fight. You know, and that's just, as you said, it's just a start for that young lady. What the heck is she going to do in the future? I can't wait to see. I guarantee a couple of title reigns in her future, I think, because, I don't know, I think if Melina just kind of gets her head right and goes after what she wants, I think she could definitely be a mega star. Yeah. So, Coach Cool Guy, speaking of, like, you know, rivalries and stories with people, what has been your favorite rivalry in ACW? Of course, it doesn't have to be one of your own. It could be any rivalry in ACW. What is your favorite? Well, for Generation 1, it would have to be Evolution versus the you, Shadow, and someone else. Soda um, Pup, who, the Ultimate Maniacs. Soda. Yeah, that would have to be my favorite Generation 1 rivalry. But for Generation 2, I guess that would have to be... I guess that would have to be Dante versus Braxton. Ooh, yes, that was a good one. Yeah, that was... That was actually one of the best rivalries I've seen in Generation 2 so far. For me, no. For Generation 2, I'd say instead of uh, Dante versus Braxton, I'd probably go with uh, Dante versus Justin Phoenix. Now, that was a lot more impactful, I think. Yeah. That was a brutal one. But hey, hey to each their own, yeah, everyone has their own personal things, and that's what I was kind of wondering about. Yeah, no, so... um. Quickly, cool guy, before we finish up here, what are your thoughts on the future of ACW? The future for ACW itself? Like, do you think ACW still has a lot more to offer? Or do you think maybe it's time to, you know, pull the curtain one day soon? Well, well, ACW is doing, is doing great. Better than, than it's going, going by each, each day or each week. Um, so I'd say let's, let's roll it out and, and when it starts going down, then I guess it would have to be time to shut the doors for ACW. That'd be a sad day. It would be a sad day. Because you know me, I'm a huge fan of ACW. So I think I think yourself would be the ones that were like, Oh god, ACW's gone, now what? <laughs> yeah, now yeah, now what? I am like ACW is mostly on what I watch every single day. Mm hmm Oh, I've noticed. <laughs> and I appreciate the hell out of it. As soon Soon, all things well would have to come to an end, and for ACW, well, that would have to be a very sad one for me. It would be a sad. I think there's still plenty of time left for ACW, but who knows, oh, guys? Yeah. 
Who knows what? Who knows what can happen? ACW could shut its doors tomorrow. It won't. Don't worry. It's not going <laughs> to. We still have plans. We still have big, big plans for the next year in ACW. So no worries yeah. there just yet. But anyway, guys, we're going to finish up here. Cool guy. Thank you so much. You gave me so much amazing stories today. I really, really appreciate it, my man. Uh, thanks for having me here. No worries, we do it at all. But would you do it again, cool guy? Uh, we should. Definitely, you'd be up for it. Uh, yeah. Awesome. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for listening to the, today's Inside ACW with Cool Guy. But as always, inmates, stay crazy, cool guy. Stay psychotic. Oh, hell yeah.